All right, we're live. Here, I'll say the prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for this wonderful day and for the chance we have to meet together as a team and, and discuss this uh, Brentwood case study. Pray that thy spirit might be with us as we do so, that we might be able to be inspired as to how to best apply the principles that we learn uh, from this case into our lives. Pray that we might be able to answer the, question, uh, the questions adequately and that uh, we might be guided by thy spirit. We pray that we might have a wonderful day today and these things we pray for and do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Cool. So first off, what do you think of the case? Well, I mean, reading through it, uh, I don't know. My first thought was they were, you know, they seem to be doing fine. <clears throat> And they could probably go any direction they want. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and I know, like, like we have that first question, or, like, what is it, the uh, pre-discussion poll or whatever. Right. Um, and at first you think maybe they should just hold out and, you know, try and um, add more valuable, value. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, like, the IPO is going to take too long. It's going to, um, you know, and it might not work out. So there's a lot more risk to that. Um, mm -hmm. But as you read the case, it seems like, like, I even read in there that, like, the restaurant business, like, the uh, economic impact doesn't mm -hmm. really affect it as much. So... Then I was starting to like, well, they they could still do it, you know. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I feel like it could go any direction <clears throat> in this case. So, yeah, it feels like yeah. Uh, so I guess that kind of leads us right into the first question here. It says, put yourself in the shoes of Brentwood Associates Management. You must decide whether or not you will exit Zoe's Kitchen now, and if so, what is the best exit option as a group vote? What should Brentwood do with Zoe's Kitchen? IPO now, sell it to a strategic buyer or a financial buyer. Wait and grow the business until it is more valuable before exiting. So I guess you kind of already said, I mean, they could go either way. So which way are you kind of leaning then? Um, now, in the case, and I don't know if I read it right, but when I was talking about the IPO, did they basically say that they could start the process um, but then go a different direction. They could. They said. I guess the the thing I think that at the beginning of the case that they kind of brought up is they weren't sure how going that route would affect them privately. So say they they start the IPO instigation. They they start soliciting investors for going public and whatnot. And then they they're like, crap, we're just not getting enough interest here. Let's rescind this IPO. So we're not gonna you know we're gonna take it back. So they weren't sure how that was going to affect them, you know. So private private investors would see, oh, you guys tried to do an IPO, but you failed, you know. So would would that devalue the company even more if they tried and, and weren't able to do it? And so they weren't sure. I'm guessing that if they did, that that would probably be kind of a bad thing, especially, I mean, I think it would be a bad thing for private investors. They'd see that and be like, oh, so you tried, but you just weren't good enough to go, at, go to, you know, public yet. Right. Because so. I, I started thinking that uh, um, depending on how fast they want it out, they mm -hmm. already had private interest in the mm -hmm. sale. So that's, you know, it's kind of like when we read these cases, I, I start to really think like how much information. You know, we don't have a lot of information as far as how fast they want out and all of that. So if I were to assume that they were wanting out within the next, I don't know, year or so, mm -hmm. wanting to do something different, then I guess I would lean towards a, a strategic buyer because they already had interest there. And so they can put it out there and try and get a competitive market Kind of like mm -hmm. we're talking about with uh, Darden, um, mm -hmm. and like how that company got a really good value to theirs. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I would lean that direction in that case. I, I mean, sure. Yeah. I like it. I, you know, I think for mine, I, I, um, it just seemed like to me that they have what they, I mean, they have the means to like in, endure this kind of rough spot. I don't know. Maybe it's just the entrepreneur in me. Like I would hate to give up, you know? Right. Right. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there's potential and like if they can stick it out, but at the same time, like it's hard for me to think like a, a private, um, a private equity firm because you know, that's not how I think I think as the actual entrepreneur. So, you know, so I guess, so I originally, and I think I still would lean towards them just sticking it out, but I think you're, it's right. You're right in the, it's good to try to to think about what they would do, you know, because they're really not us, you know. And so I see where you're saying, yeah, a private equity firm would be like, well, you know, this is this doesn't turn into a lot of money for us yet. Maybe if we sell it to somebody else, we can get some of the interest back, you know, that we put in and and all that stuff or the equity we put in. Yeah, so I see where you're coming from. I mean, and even like the whole like stick it out, but. Like when I was reading the um, the background, I mean, they were they were growing pretty quick, mm-hmm. and for them to mm-hmm. realistically, when you first grab a company, as long as it's successful for what like seven to ten years, I mean, and they're already sitting in twenty thirteen, still making a profit. I mean, they could keep sticking it out until they they get the value that they want. Um, mm-hmm. It's just all how fast they want to get out of it. So, and most of us are going to be, well, you know, this is what we were interested in before. So we need to stick it all the way through because I don't know how many investments we're going to look to actually go out and try and find. So, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just no, that's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. Cool. So the next thing is a group allow each individual to stay his or her position. If you agree at the outset, take a counter position and explore why you should consider those other options. Um, so the options and the positions we're supposed to take is why does Brentwood want to exit now? What are some reasons for holding now? And what could what can go right under each scenario, each of those two scenarios, and what could go wrong? Um, I think their whole wanting to exit now might have to do with, uh, I know they talked about Zoomies in the case, and mm-hmm. so Brentwood has taken that one public. Mm-hmm. And so I think right now that's, they want another one. They're trying to basically e- expand their investment firm and try and bring, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a simple word. but Their portfolio or something? Yeah, they're, building, they're trying to build it up so they can, they can go out and get more investments. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's why they're wanting to exit now. Um, the reason to hold on though, is that, you know, they want more value, obviously, um, is my thought. And I mean, what can go wrong? They, they might not get the value they want, um, depending on which, uh, scenario they use it could uh well could hurt the company is my thoughts and i don't know yeah i agree and the next one what are some reasons for holding now um well to add value um and see where they can take it, you know, see if they can get a better um, return on it. Mm-hmm. That'd be the um, thing that I came up with. Yeah. And then naturally what could go wrong? Well, it could not be profitable for them. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> value, but over the next couple of years, if that's the case, and you know, they'd be kicking themselves for get, not getting out sooner. And then right. they'd be kicking themselves if they got out and it did blow up, you know? So, Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, kind of a balancing game there. So the last question: How much is Zoe's worth under each exit option? Discuss with each other, or with each, other, with each other how you got your answers as a group. Come up with a consensus as to what Zoe's is worth. Um, and the bullet points: What differences did you observe in the valuations based on who buys the company? 
does this make any sense? Discusses the group and why would anyone sell to a financial buyer instead of an IPO? Um, so I, I think we kind of struggled finding like actual like values, but uh, Molly and I kind of found a spot um, towards the end of the case. It's right above weight and gain um, scale, kind of the very last section. So it's the section before the last section. It talks about um, multipliers. Wait, was it that one? Like uh, 52% revenue, 42%. Well, it actually talks about like selling to each option. Maybe it wasn't that section. I thought it was. Dang it. Exit decisions. Well, maybe go ahead with, uh, if you have any thoughts there, go ahead. I'll, I'll try to find this while you're. Yeah, I didn't even really look at that question beforehand. So yeah. I didn't really come up with a, a value of the company. Um, I don't know. Let's see here. I'm trying to read through. Yeah. Oh, it is there. I just didn't go down far enough. All right, cool. So it, uh, yeah, it's, it's that last set or well, it's second to last section right above weight and gain scale. Um, it talks about uh, multipliers. So average multiples paid by financial sponsors and strategic investors. So I kind of liked the financial sponsors option. That was one where um, they would sell a minority stake in Zoe's to like a, to a sponsor and they would still have like majority, you know, investment in, in the company, but that minority stake would give them some extra capital that would kind of offset some of the investment they've already put into Zoe's. But at the same time, they could stick around for the IPO in a couple of years and still have a chunk of change that they're going to get when the, when the company does go public. So that was kind of the, I think he said, the, the opportunity that gave the, that they got the cake and they got to eat it as well. Right, right. That's kind of a cool option. Um, so he said that the multiplier for that one was 8x. Um, so right now they're 113, $113 million in 2013 is what the revenue was. So 8x there, um, 13x is to strategic investors. So if they're just to sell it like outright to somebody just to replace them, um, it'd be 13x. And then um, the public publicly traded companies right now, the current valuation is 21x. So if they were able to, you know, swing a, a decent IPO, um, it seems like the average is 21x. So I mean, an IPO would ideally be the best, but I just don't think they're ready for the IPO. But so yeah, I guess those, those are the multipliers we saw. Um, Just because I'm, because I, I don't know, I'm not a really big numbers guy. Sure. So you take twenty one x, and then you times it by the 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 revenue. The revenue, okay. Yeah. And then that's the value of your company. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. There's different multipliers um, for different markets. Right now, we've got a company that uh, we're in. Uh, the marketing, um, kind of online marketing market, I guess you'd say. Right. And our player 6X for just uh, regular investors. Okay. Yeah, it's just different markets have different valuations and different multipliers. Gotcha. But I mean, that's, that's a pretty good, yeah, those are pretty good multipliers. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, it all comes down to, you know, how fast they want out and how much money they, you know, essentially want to make off of it. So, right. Especially if you're going by those multipliers, then, you know. Yep. Um, yeah, it seems like a lot of these cases come down to, you know, the the team, you know, and or whoever is responsible for making this, these, these decisions, what type of a person are they, you know, what do they expect to get out of this, this deal? And right. You know, there's people that are more risk adverse that naturally they just want to, you know, hold on and try to make it happen. And other people that are like, Hey, let's just get out before we could lose anything. And so I, it really does come up. And I, I kind of appreciate that about the cases, I guess, is just the, the fact that it puts us into different positions and we try to, see you know what their perspective is on the situation and, and how they're going to respond for b 
you know, in a private equity firm. But I could see myself needing a private equity firm to fund, you know, one of my businesses or something like that. So right. it's kind of cool to have that insight into what they're thinking, you know, as, as they're trying to take this company public and whatnot. Right. Yeah. But, cool. Yeah. Oh, and then it, so I guess the last question, why would anyone sell to a financial buyer instead of an IPO? Um, I, I feel like they would sell to a financial buyer if, if they really didn't think their business um, was going to cut it in the IPO process. Um, and, and essentially it's just them wanting to get out and just make some money off of it instead of having to do all that work to maybe not make as much or to fail, which then exactly. makes their company is that's, uh, that's my thoughts on that. But no, I think that's exactly right. So sweet. Well, do you want to do just a short uh, summary of kind of what, what we talked about here and I'll timestamp it. Uh, yeah, go for it. All right. Whenever you're ready. Um, so I talked about um, Zoe's Kitchen. Um, I think uh, I don't know if we did we decide on a best option. Um, I mean, I think you were kind of leaning towards was it a strategic buyer? Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, I was leaning towards a strategic buyer. Um, there you go. So I feel like if they go that direction, um, they'll be able to make it more of a competition and still get a good value out of the company. Um, we've, you know, talked about if, um, they go the IPO route, um, they could probably still make it work, but it'd be further out and, um, um, holding on would, you know, m maybe add more value to the company. Um, and uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I like it. Surprising. You're doing good, man. So let's see here. Um, it just depends on how fast they want out of the company, and um, and that's that's why we'll go with the strategic financial buyer. So I like it. Cool, man. Well. Um, I think both Cade and, and uh, Molly said that this Tuesday night should work. Does it look like your schedule would work for a 9.30 meeting yeah. Tuesday? Yeah, I this, yeah, that'll work. I It was just Valentine's Day. I hadn't done anything. so. Oh, no, it makes sense, man. I, I get you. <laughs> Got to have your priorities straight. <laughs> right? So. Yeah. Hey, so cool, I, I tried to get on – um to create the hangout okay but when i went into the youtube where because i clicked on it through my yeah if you're in youtube um and you're signed into your account just go up to the top right where you see like your picture or your icon up there on your right corner and click on that okay and then it'll pop up a little deal where you see your picture and it'll say creator studio underneath your name and subscribers Okay. So click on Creator Studio and it'll bring you to the Creator Studio. Over on the left side, um, you can click on live streaming. It's a little drop down over there next to all the other drop downs. Okay. And then click on events. And then from here, you can click that up in the upper right corner again. It's a new live event with the plus button. Hmm. Did you see that? Right hand corner. Yeah, did you click on events? Oh, there's events. Okay, sorry. It's still on the Yeah, click yeah, click on events and then once you click on that up in the upper right corner there'll be a new live event button. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's it. You'll click it. Um add a name that you know you'll from what I've been doing, I've just been calling it like B forty three, whatever the case name is. Okay. And group meeting. And then um, it'll bring up the, another window for Google Hangouts and it'll, you know, kind of do its thing and you'll see yourself on the camera. And uh, you can copy the link up in the, the URL bar before you even start broadcasting. And that's the one that I email out to you guys. 
Okay. And whenever everybody's in the meeting, then you can click start broadcast and then it'll start recording. And then once you click on stop broadcast and close the window, if you go back to your YouTube um, channel, it'll be, I guess if you, even right here on the events page, it should um, be the most recent video that pops up there. But if it doesn't pop up there for whatever reason, you can go to your videos okay. and uh, you'll see it just in there. And then you can just copy that URL and email it out to everybody if you're you're the one doing the email or doing the, the hosting. Okay, sweet. Oh. I had done it before, but then I'm like, everything looked different. So it it, they switched things around this year. Yeah, last last semester, you know, during all my Google Hangouts, we met through Google Hangouts, whereas it wasn't through YouTube. And so Google changed that to where it's now condensed into YouTube. That's uh, so yeah, it's a different process. Yeah, it took me a little while to figure it out too. <laughs> well, thanks. I appreciate uh, it. No problem. Man. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Tuesday. Yep. Sounds good. You too.